Welcome to Levant TV Headlines. CIA's President Bashar al-Assad says extremists cannot be defeated by countries that have, quote, spread terrorism in an apparent jab at members of the US-led anti-jihadist coalition. Islamic State fighters are closing on a key Syrian town near the Turkish border despite multiple US airstrikes as the Pentagon cautioned it cannot bomb the militants into obscurity. Tunisian youth disillusioned with the post-revolution era have flocked to join jihadists overseas with about an estimated 3,000 going to Syria since 2011. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott says Australia's military jets also uh, will join uh, the US-led air war against the Islamic State group in Iraq. And South Sudanese lawmakers have proposed granting security forces to, to uh, the ability to make virtually unrestricted powers of arrests in the war-torn nation. Now let's have a look at top headlines in today's newspapers in the Middle East. From Beirut, the Daily Star is reporting that the controversial wage hike draft law was sent back to committee by the Speaker immediately after he convened the parliamentary session, citing the opposition of many sectors to the bill. The paper also reports that uh, Turkey's parliament will debate allowing foreign military forces to use Turkish bases for cross-border operations against ISIS militants in Syria and Iraq. The Egypt Independent is reporting that the Freedom for the Brave movement has said that there are 150 people on hunger strike, including 136 detainees and 14 others. The paper also reports that an Egyptian citizen was killed in Libya after being mistakenly shot as he was passing through hotspot in troubled Benghazi. And from the UAE, the Khalish Times reports that US President Barack Obama and India's new Premier Narendra Modi touted the potential for deeper economic collaboration between the world's two largest democracies while seeking to address concerns that they have grown apart. The paper also reports that a 50-year-old man in Dubai went into a diabetic coma after his wife locked him in the bathroom in a bid to prevent him from visiting his second wife. And now let's have a look at top Middle East headlines from papers in the UK. The Telegraph East Middle East News reporting that Britain began airstrikes against the Islamic State by destroying a militant heavy weapon position and one of their armed vehicles. The paper says the strikes between mean that Britain has joined the front line of an American-led coalition in support of Iraqi and Kurdish forces trying to beat back the extremist movement. And The Guardian East Middle East News reporting that members of the Kurdish diaspora have been staging protests and hunger strikes around the world in support of calls by Kurdish leaders in Syria for weapons to help their forces fighting the Islamic State. The paper says while Kurds have taken to the streets of uh, European cities, those in Britain have initiated a hunger strike close to the gates of Downing Street as part of a campaign calling for the UK to provide Kurdish forces with advanced weapons. Also from the UK, the Independent reports that Iraqi military pilots intending to supply aid and armory to its soldiers besieged by ISIS militants have mistakenly supplied the items directly to its enemy. The paper adds that a senior security official and a brigadier general said that the supplies of food, water and ammunition intended to help Iraqi soldiers in the, in the country's uh, western province of uh, Saglawia. And now international papers. From Beijing, the Global Times reports that Secretary of Iran's Supreme National Security Council Ali Shamkhani says that US-led anti-Islamic state coalition is amputated and does not have international legitimacy. The paper adds that Shamkhani stressed that the coalition was a ridiculous farce and would not be effective or willing to place ground troops in the battlefield because they had been defeated in Iraq and Afghanistan. And finally, the International New York Times reports that the government of Kuwait is increasingly wielding a penalty that was once rare, revoking citizenship. Paper says the severity of the punishment imposed for offences that sometimes amount to little more than disagreeing with the government has stoked bitterness and raised an unaccustomed fear that new lines are being drawn between loyalty and treason. That was it for today. For more updates, visit our website on levant.tv. 
Thanks for watching and bye for now. Thank you.